This is something I'm still trying to wrap my head around. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you about prayer. And I want to talk to you about the power of prayer. Because prayer is one of the most effective tools that we have in the spiritual battle that God has called us to. Now, usually when I share a story with you guys, I share something that I have learned. Right? Like when I learn something, I love to share it with you. But this is something that I feel is really important, something that we should totally talk about, but something that I don't fully understand. Right? I understand a lot of different parts of it, and I've read a lot from my Bible trying to, trying to understand it. But this concept is something that I am still learning. And maybe I'll still be learning for the whole rest of my life. And that's the idea that there is power in prayer. But first of all, I want to talk to you about the things that I know for sure. For one, I know that God hears me and God hears you, right? I know a lot of people who say that they're bad at praying. And if by bad at praying, you mean you're not sure God hears you because you're not doing it right, you don't have to worry about that at all. You don't have to pray in a very specific way in order for God to hear you, right? If you talk to God, he's listening. Really, I think that when most people say that they're bad at praying, they just mean they're embarrassed to pray in public. But really, I think the only way that you can be bad at praying is to just not pray. And another thing that I know is that God answers prayers, right? Not only does God hear you, but he loves you. And not only does he love you, he is God. He is almighty, all powerful. That means that he can do anything. So like even in my own life, I've seen the power of prayer. And this is kind of an embarrassing story because people are like, you know, people want to know about miracles and I've seen a miracle. A miracle has happened to me because of prayer. But usually, you know, when people think of miracles, they think of something, you know, big and epic and awesome, like, you know, parting the Red Sea or walking on water or bringing somebody who is dead back to life. My miracle story is much more humble and honestly a little bit embarrassing, but I want to share it with you today. So like my family, a few years ago when I was younger, we went on a missions trip to a different country. And we went to a part of that country where they were very, very poor. And we were helping a church down there rebuild their building. And also we were going and we were telling people about the good news of Jesus Christ. It was really, really powerful. It was, it was a great experience. It was hard in a lot of ways, but it was really good. And so it wasn't just my family. It was, it was several people from my church. It was like a whole team we went down there. And they split us up into different like host families. So we were staying at the different people's houses, right? Like they'd have like a spare room for us or some, you know, like a couch or some extra beds or something for us to sleep on. But again, this was a very poor country. And these were very poor people that we were staying with. And the lady that my dad and I were staying with, my mom and my brother, they went to one person's house and my, my you know, other teams, they were at other houses, but just me and my dad were at this lady's house and she was so kind. Her house was like, It was like smaller than my room and one of the walls was like part of a giant billboard like the big pole that holds up a giant billboard that was that big pole was like one of her walls and she had a bathroom and a kitchen and like a living room that was also like a bedroom where her bed was on one side and me and my dad we had beds on the other side they told us that people were probably going to be very generous with their food and they said that that you should really try to eat it. And this lady, she was. She was so kind. She shared so much food with us. I know she couldn't have had that much food total, but she she just kept bringing me and my dad more and more and more food. And I just kept eating and eating and eating. And I was at the point where I could like feel the food like like up in my throat. Like it wasn't going down into my stomach anymore. So I excused myself and I went into the bathroom and I'm standing in there and I'm like absolutely going to throw up. Like, I don't want to be gross, but I can feel it happening. And I felt so bad because the, the house was so, like, the walls were so thin. There is zero chance that I, I could throw up in this bathroom without this kind lady hearing me. And so I was praying to God. I said, God, I, you know, I wasn't, be, you know, even talking out loud because she would totally hear me. And I, I was just even in my head, I was praying to God. I said, God, this lady has been so kind and, and I feel so undeserving for all that she has given me and I I so do not want to upset her or offend her or make her feel like the food that she has given me which was delicious by the way that the food that she's given me has you know somehow made me sick please I need your help and I kid you not that second boom I felt fine completely fine and I was just like whoa 
it like it worked. I feel fine. And so like I washed my hands and stuff to, you know, so they wouldn't think that I was just standing there waiting to throw up. And I went back out and I kid you not, I had two more plates of food. So again, for me, I'm wholly convinced, 100% convinced that God does miracles because he did one for me. It's kind of an embarrassing miracle. You know, it's not like a big deal kind of thing, but God answered my prayer. And there's no way that that could have been anything else than an answer to prayer. It wasn't just, you know, some natural occurrence of like some, some room being made in my stomach normally. No, this was not a normal thing that happened to me. So I know that God can and will answer prayers. Not just because I read about it, but because it's happened to me in my life. And I know lots of other people that have had, you know, more impressive miracles happen in their life where they've prayed for something and it happened. But here's the other thing, and this is the part that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. There are times where God does not give you what you ask for. I had a friend who, her brother was in a really bad car accident and and like everybody at my church was praying for her brother. I was praying for her brother and I asked God that he would heal her brother. And I believed he would, but he didn't. And there will be some people who say, oh, well, Douglas, you, you didn't believe enough. But I did. You can't tell me that I didn't because I, I did. And besides that, Jesus said that if you have faith, even just the size of a mustard seed, that's teeny tiny, that God will move mountains for you. And he has, but there's also been times that he hasn't. And there are some people who will say, well, actually, I know somebody who was a pastor, but now he doesn't believe in God. And he says he doesn't believe in God because prayer doesn't work. And he'll point to times where, you know, you'd ask for something and you wouldn't get it. Well, listen, prayer does work. Big time. Unless by prayer doesn't work, you mean God doesn't always do whatever we tell him to do. If that's what you mean, then yeah, you're right. Prayer doesn't work. At least not like that. God's not a vending machine. God is God. And he loves us. And he hears us. And he is mighty to save. But sometimes God has plans that aren't ours. And I've heard people say that God always answers our prayers. Like, it's always either a yes, a no, or a not yet. And I think for the most part that's true, but I also think that sometimes that idea can kind of diminish who God is and what he can do. Because it kind of gets the idea of like, well, you know, yeah, you can pray to God and maybe he'll do what you want, but, you know, maybe he won't. Hard telling. And then also there's this idea in scripture where God knows what you need even before you do, right? Like, he knows what you're going to say before you say it. So one of my questions is, you know, like, why pray at all? And this is a question that I have, you know, like, in my head, but it's also a question that I have, like, in my life. Like, my life kind of reflects this tough thing. I don't pray near as much as I should because I kind of feel like, oh, well, you know, God already knows. Or I think, well, you know, God's got a big plan and God's big plan is going to happen whether I ask or not. And that is an attitude that I have in myself that I know is not good. I can look at scripture and I can see that that's not the way I'm supposed to be. The Bible says that I should pray continually. and says that I should ask with confidence. I should pray boldly and I should pray often. And it's not like I should pray boldly and I should pray often because, you know, how dare I not do that? You know, it's not like a, it's not like a, I'll get punished if I, if I don't pray enough or if I don't pray with confidence. But bold and constant prayer, that's the way to a happy life. It is. And that's the way to a strong relationship with God. At least that's part of the picture. And so for me in my life, I'm trying to pray more often and I'm trying to pray with more confidence, more boldly. And I hope you will too. And there have been a couple of passages that have been very encouraging to me in, you know, trying to wrap my head around the power of prayer. One of them is, you know, the passage about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like, they were told, if you don't bow down to this golden statue, you're going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. And they told the king, they said, our God can save us from the fiery furnace. And, you know, it turns out later, he did. But they said, but even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down. And the other passage that's really been helpful is the one where Jesus is, you know, he goes off to the garden and he is praying to God before he's crucified. He knew what was going to happen to him. He knew how hard... It was going to be. And he essentially said, God, if there's any other way that we can do this, let's do it that way. But the real important line there is he said, but not my will, but your will be done. And I think Jesus' prayer was a model for us to follow. You know, both Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Jesus, they prayed for help. And for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, things turned out the way they hoped they would. And even though Jesus was crucified, even though Jesus died a horrible death, they went the way he hoped they would too. 
not my will, but yours be done. There is a fine line between like confidence and submission, a sweet spot, a sweet spot that includes both perfect submission and perfect confidence. And I think that's where we should be when we pray. I think if we're in that spot, it affects how we pray. I think that if we're in that spot, that whatever we ask in Jesus' name will be given to us. I think that if we have great confidence, but little submission, I think that when we pray, we're just going to get frustrated. Because we'll pray for something confidently, but then it won't come. And then we'll think, bah, God doesn't care, or God doesn't exist, or whatever. But I also don't think it's good for us to, you know, pendulum reaction the other way, where we're just submissive, right? We're just submitting to God. And that's kind of where I've ended up, where it's like, I know that God is sovereign. I know that God has things under control, and that whatever happens is part of God's plan. I think that's fine, but I think that if I'm just over there and, I, and I'm not praying with confidence, I'm going to be missing out big time. I'm going to be missing out on the big things that, that God can do through me and my prayers. You know, if you're all confidence, you might ask for something that is totally against what God wants for you. Something that's against what God wants for you and what God wants for the world. And God will just straight up say no. I'm pretty certain that if you confidently ask for, you know, laser vision in Jesus' name, you're not going to get it. I think that the more we submit to God, the more that we learn about God, the more that we talk to him and, and build a relationship with him, the more we will know what to pray for and how to pray for it. Again, like I said, it's not like you, you need magic words or whatever. If you talk to God, he hears you. God hears you, he loves you, and he is powerful, and he has a good plan for you. And like I said, I, I don't fully understand the power of prayer, but I'm learning and I hope you'll learn with me. Let's draw close to God. Let's submit our lives to him and to his will. The closer you're following God, the easier it will be to see his will, see what he wants. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. So let's submit to God, knowing that he is all powerful. He understands everything. He knows what we're going to say even before we say it, and his plan is perfect. But let's also pray with boldness. Let's take an active role in the amazing plan that God has for us and for the world. Let's pray with boldness and with confidence and all the time. I might not fully understand it, but I can tell you this. There is power in prayer. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. And yeah, like I said, I usually like to talk about something that I, you know, feel like I've kind of wrapped my head around. Something that I, I have a, a pretty good grasp on. Because it seems kind of silly to teach about something that you don't fully understand. But I do also think that there's something valuable about coming alongside one another, right? Building each other up. I don't share what I'm learning because I understand everything. I share what I'm learning because we're all in this together. We're all a part of the body of Christ. And I think that our triumphs can, can build each other up just as much as our struggles can. I hope you'll join me in making an effort to pray often and to pray with confidence fully expecting that God can and will answer our prayers. There's power in prayer because our God is powerful and he loves us very much. 